Hi, this is David Yak, and in this video, we're going to look at some terminology changes that have been happening recently at Microsoft. We're going to look at how things that have been formerly known as entity, field, record, option sets, and more have now have new names that you need to get up to speed with to make sure you're current on all your terminology. So what's happening? Well, as a product matures and takes on a more generic, broad appeal, things have to change to make it more appealing to the broad set of users that are using it. So Microsoft has done some user research, some deep searching, and we've seen some transitions as things have moved from Dynamics CRM to Dynamics 365 to the Common Data Service. And then even into the future, we'll probably see some new names for things like the Common Data Service that reach more broad appeal or just branding of how Microsoft looks at it. But what we're gonna be looking at in this is specifically some individual terminology of some of the internal components, things that you probably have known and loved for a long time, and I want to bring you up to speed on the new names. So let's go through one at a time some of the key changes that have happened. First one is entity and entities. This has now changed to be table and tables. Now, all these changes that I'm going to be going through, you're going to see slowly roll out throughout the Microsoft ecosystem. For example, you may pull up some documentation and see some of each as it transitions through. You can think of table, though, as being more similar to what you would find in a, as traditional database. And that's why it's appealing to users, because it's one less thing that you have to explain the difference of when you're explaining the overall data concepts. The next one is fields and attributes. And I have to admit that I've always used these interchangeably before, so I'll probably still mix these even together with the new ones like columns. Column comes into play for the new naming of the field or attribute. And you could look at this going back to the Excel spreadsheet or also to the database tables. They have tables with columns. So a lot of people are very comfortable with this terminology. So we used to say that a entity had records. Now you'll say that a table has rows. Now I think records and rows might be splitting hairs a little bit, but rows, very familiar terminology again from the Excel and the database world. But people are so comfortable using the word record, I don't think you'll see it completely be removed from people's vocabulary. Option sets and pick lists now become choices or choice. I have to say that I won't miss pick list being there. It always seemed awkward to say pick list, even though I knew they came from the concept of picking one from a list. Choices does seem a little bit more intuitive here. And finally, two options becomes yes or no. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work because sometimes two options can actually be something other than yes or no, but we'll see how that works. Now I can already see the smoke starting to come out of the developers' heads as they watch this video thinking about all the code that they have to change. Well, you don't have to panic. These terminology updates aren't applicable for APIs or messages. So things like create entity request or create attribute request won't be changed or other messages that have entity field and so forth as part of it will remain because they don't want to break the contract to make the changes. In fact, even for those of you that aren't developers, you'll have to realize for a while, we'll be living in a mixed world where people will be using old and new terminology together to describe what they're working on. And we'll have to be flexible to do our own translation of what they said as we're listening to it. You gotta love Microsoft, they love changing names. Well, that's it. We just wanted to bring you up to speed on the latest terminology. So when you heard it or started seeing it in the user experience, you weren't surprised. Click like and subscribe to make sure you stay current on all things with Power Platform and Dynamics 365.